Hi. <laughs> it's been a bit. Um, I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's taken me a little bit to get out of this hole this time. Somebody needs to check tape. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been oh, way long. And uh, people are calling me out for it. And I appreciate that because this one's a lot different. Um, so what has been going on in Melissa's world? Well, I got a haircut. My husband did it. Okay, but this, just so you know, this and this, I don't want to get, make you guys tell us, but the Kardashians pay a lot for this. Thank you, Medicare. That's right, I'm on Medicare, if you didn't know that. So if you need help with Medicare, call me. Uh, totally serious, I know the Medicare system now. And it's not easy. So where have I been? Uh, I've been here, literally, every day, all day except for a doctor's appointments, which does not help because I think what happened, if I were to kind of um, step back and evaluate things, which we're also gonna talk about. I have a list tonight. We're trying to be organized and we're gonna get there, by the way. So, I had to take steroids because my brain was swollen and I started chemo. So that's kind of worn out too. I don't know. We're just, it's just hair. Listen, I don't know that this drug, I'm going to completely lose all my hair. I'm starting to think not. I think it's just going to thin because it would be gone by now. Cause I just finished tomorrow is my off week. So I've been, I've had, well, maybe second cycle. Hmm. Anyway, I've done one full cycle. Um, okay, so let's back up. We did brain radiation, showed you guys the videos. And then I would say from probably <laughs> uh, then until now, I've kind of been losing my shit and not doing so well. I don't know how my husband would describe it. I... It's, it's not been good. Here's why. So we did brain radiation and I love my doctors because they're very honest and they'll say, okay, you know, here's what can happen. You know, when we go back in and do another brain scan, which I'm having next week, uh, he's like, there could be new spots. There could be the spots that we had, but that maybe they didn't get clear margins. If you don't know what that means, it's like, they might not, they might like get this part and you still have this. So they have to come back and get this. Um, so he's like, you know, we need to make sure we got all the, all the spots and blah, blah, blah. So they're already prepping you for failure is the way I look at it. I mean, when you're in a hole, it's really hard to be like, oh, that's great. Great. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll prep for that. Cause you're like, okay, so this is our new life is doing radiation, scan, radiation, scan, radiation, scan. And he's like, let me just say, um, because I love my family, I would do that as many times as I need to. If I didn't have family, I wouldn't be doing that one. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, so let me explain, because that's tough. The quality of life. This is the first time my quality of life has been impacted. And my doctors talked about quality versus quantity and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just think like, oh, this is a bad day. I could see I could see why people can't do this. And then you, you get farther in and you're like, I thought that was bad. Shit, this is nothing. Like, brain's a whole nother deal. Because for those of you that, that don't understand how chemotherapy work. So brain meds. So here's what happened. Let me, let me do this. We did brain radiation. I also found out it was too close of a diagnosis. So I found out about the liver, which I originally was sent a, the whole mess was a mess. It was a mess. I was given chart updates as I was in the ER or as I was home or as I, and, and it's like, Oh, you're sending me my brain MRI. You're not going to send it to my doctor first? 
Oh, and I just had it yesterday and I don't meet with him for three days. So what the hell is all this? I got overwhelmed because we found out we had liver, a lot of new bone, and then brain. So, for those of you that don't know, around this gobble area, which honestly, here's what's weird. I've lost weight, but it doesn't look like it in this area. Um, you have a layer of, it's called the blood brain barrier. I don't know how big it is. I think it's around here. Look it up on Google. Anyway, chemo does not pass the blood brain barrier. So, the only treatment you have is radiation. Because chemo won't go up through there. However, what uh, becomes extremely alarming for me is that it's never good when your cancer finds a new home. Like, it can float around wherever it wants. Float around. My appendix is off limits. No, my appendix. My pancreas. I've already told it. You, no. No. Do you like how I, well, I, if you didn't know, I'm like, no. Um, and I didn't want brain, but here's what's scary. Somehow through that layer of goo, cancer cells have made their way up and found five places to take home, which hopefully they're now gone. Um, but unfortunately, because of my brain swelling, I had seizures and so we can't drive. I rode my scooter around the other day. I couldn't ride my scooter. Um, and I'm on steroids. So I think then there's also, which is why the cheeks, which actually, by the way, I've been off for two weeks and this is a lot more narrow. It used to be, it looked like the dog. I sent a picture to my sister. I look like the dog off of that cartoon when we were little. Look, I have jowls. I have jowls. Isn't that great? Anyway, um, and then we did go to the Lego exhibit if you want to see that. Look at that's Legos. How cool is that? Anyway, um, this has been more of a quality of life issue. That's his most famous thing. It was the coolest. You guys need to go. It's called the, um, the brick. I can't remember. Um, okay, so what else? I saw a cardio-oncologist. Her comment is to just get me to do more chemo. So that also kind of sets you into when you're already down, it's kind of like kicking you. And there's things that shouldn't bother you that bother you just because you read it differently, I think. Um, but the brain has been a lot different. And I think having so much growth, like we've got brain, bone, and a lot of bone, liver. So it's a lot in a little period of time when you were cancer free for a bit, that kind of starts getting a little crazy. Um, here's the problem. I'm not even high right now, and this is the amount of lack of focus, I would say, that my brain can handle. So, um, two things. I'm going to start showing you guys some of my favorite things. This is one. We'll show you another day because this is already on my desk. And because we've had a bad time, I've been thinking of my little New Yorkers. So, here's one of my favorite things. Um, I got this when I was in New York at Saks with my mom. We hold on to it tight like a baby. So, the subway moves, which I love. And there's a Statue of Liberty and the towers when they were up. And then there's little horses in a car, and then Empire State, Chrysler Plaza, Yankee Stadium with fans, and a little cabbie. Anyway, I got that probably in the 90s, like early 90s. I think I was in high school maybe, or I just graduated from high school. I bet I just graduated and we went. Anyway. 
Now that I have my New Yorkers, this is even more special to me. Um, I just gotta get, I think my moonshine glass is my Katrina thing, but I have my, my mug. So anyway, I'm, um, trying to get back to good. So one question, Jason and I have kind of inside been doing, and we're going to talk politics. There's a very political movie called The Campaign with Will Ferrell and Zach Galifianakis. And I feel like for a political show, I feel like everybody needs to watch it. There has to be something funny going on right now. Anyway, Will Ferrell is the Democratic incumbent congressman. Zach Galifianakis, Zach Galifianakis is the Republican candidate. And there's a point where they're, you know, pulling it all strings to get voted in. And they go to, they start talking about, we're going to make it a holy war. And they're going to go to churches and blah, blah, blah. So Will Ferrell goes to this church where they have snakes, like snake charmer kind of things. And he ends up getting bit by a snake. And he's like, it bit me. There's a lot of colorful language in that part. Sorry, Katrina, I kind of forgot about that. Anyway, uh, he's standing there and his campaign manager is Jason Sudeikis. And Jason's like, how are you doing, buddy? And he's like, I, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm maintaining. And he's like, you look horrible. You're not maintaining. He's like, oh, no, I think I'm maintaining. He's like, you're, you're not maintaining. I've had to say to Jason multiple times, am I maintaining? Because, um, I don't know that I always am anymore. And that's what's kind of scary. So we'll get there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging out. We'll get there. But I wanted to say hi and reach out because so many people have reached out and told me that, um, there's been a few. Are you still around? Totally understandable. Yes, I am. I look a lot different, but you know, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get to puffed soon. What else? Okay. So here's what I want to leave you with because this has been kind of an amazing gift and so much of it speaks to me that depending on where you are in life, it's not a bad book. So it's the, my sister gave it to me on our road trip. It's the Book of Joy by the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Tutu. And it's, she's going to be correcting me right now, two weeks, one week of interviews with them. Like they both got together. They had like a little, it was like an all day session. And this man wrote a book and it's amazing. They also have it on um, audio book. So here's what I've lost. My way to find words. That's what I am not maintaining. Uh, I don't know if I'm maintaining my anger or if it's because of steroids, because of frustration, because I'm stuck at home in chemo or with COVID. I don't know. But there's a lot of things that have kind of been pulling in my heart lately. So my sister Gretchen got me this book. I only have one sister. And... So much of it speaks to me because I think for everyone, when you get to a certain point in your life and you know that the end is close, I mean, it could still be a year or two, but, um, I, it's just spoken to me. I think everybody should just, even just check out, like, I'll even read a chapter to you. You know what that felt. Um, it's just speaking to me in the sense that it's a really good book if you just need to kind of get back to what matters. Um, I mean, it's literally the book of joy and teaching you like what's important and what to focus on. And I feel like with COVID, everybody's already done that. But maybe it'll even tie up some more things. It's just a great book. It's a great book. Um, I This is the first book I've ever gone through besides a textbook. And highlighted, like lined out a lot. <laughs> so I love it. It's upstairs by my bedroom. Go get it. But everybody have a good night. I promise I'll be on more. Um, 
I'll take you to chemo. My nurses love hanging out. Uh, it is Halloween, so I'll post a video of my kids just so there's some fun because they're pretty proud of their costumes. I think that's it. So we'll touch soon. We'll touch soon. We'll talk soon. We're not going to touch. Don't lick anybody, Katie. You know who you are. Um, a friend of mine unfortunately got COVID and I said, don't lick anybody. She's like, well, I lick somebody. Well, there you go. So don't lick anybody. Stay safe. Don't lick anybody. Wash your hands. Okay. I love you. Stay safe. If you guys need tips, I've been doing this way too damn long. So if the sponge tips helps on the bathtub, tell me your problem and I'll tell you a tip. Seven bucks. Amazon. Target. Walmart. Good night.